at all. Well, let's get started, all right? So this is a safe at home program. And um, what it most, and most of the time it would be called the simple home modification program. And um, these are just simple ways that you can modify your home so that it's easier for you as you get older to stay mobile and um, prevent any injuries from happening. Um, because we all know that um, one of the big reasons that when we get older, we get injured is many times falling down. Um, and that is not a fun thing to do. My, uh, I am, um, I'm, I'm lucky to still have my grandma around and she is getting older and living by herself. And so my mom and I have taken this program and, and worked to help create her home uh, a more safe and fun place to live. And so we know that she's taken care of and, and we don't have to worry about her as much. So let's get started. And this is, this is one of those programs where I would love and encourage you guys to unmute yourselves and chat during it. I want to hear feedback from you and, and hear what you all are thinking during it. So, all right. So first, when we, when we talk about modifying your home and aging in place, the, the one thing we have to consider is, is, is this going to be the best route for me? Um, and, there's, and there's three considerations that I like to take into account. Uh, the first is, will this be the safest option for you as you get older? Are you going to be able to meet all of your health needs if you stay in your home? Uh, there are some individuals who need a lot more interventions and care that can be taken care of in their home. So it is easier at times to stay in a nursing home or a assisted residential facility. The next is, do you have a relative or caregiver to help you when you need? One of the, one of the things that makes living by yourself, living uh, in your own home as you get older is that isolation piece. And, and that's why one of the reasons why we brought you all to these programs is to connect you all with other individuals and um, meet, meet new people. Uh, but having, having somebody that you can call if you are in trouble is a, great, is a great thing that you need to consider when thinking about staying in your home for a long period of time. The next is, do you have a budget in place to afford the changes needed to be made into your home? And we will get into costs a little bit later, but thinking about how are you going to pay for those uh, modifications and adjustments that you need inside your home. Okay, so this is all encourage you all to unmute yourselves. Um, why, why are some reasons that you would want to stay in your home and, and why would you make some modifications for yourself? Would anybody like to share? Okay. Um, the home that I bought, um, uh, is currently all in one level and this is why I bought this home so that I could, you know, actually it's a duplex, but still, uh, so that I can not have to take stairs and, you know, just kind of stay in the same space so I bought that for no stairs uh-huh yeah, we currently all the bedrooms are on the second floor so we're thinking as we get older too that at some point we're going to need a one level because <laughs> the knees don't do so well after a certain age <laughs> yeah yeah I'm the same way we're all our bedrooms are either upstairs or in the basement so um I always thought maybe an elevator but I don't Think that's going to be feasible <laughs> yeah and there there are definitely ways that um we can make those adjustments still in your home and make things comfortable um and affordable which is which is the best part uh, living in nursing homes in those facilities is can be expensive uh, but that's great thinking ahead and and thinking about what what are you hopefully not going to need, but in case you need it, what's going to be the best? And even, even as a young kid like me, I wake up and my knees are sore because I think I played sports too much as a kid. <laughs> it catches up to you at some point. <laughs> yeah. One thing that my son-in-law's grandparents did uh, when I heard the mention of the elevator, they literally did the chairlift on the side of their stairs mm -hmm. and it was wonderful that they were much, much older that they were able to stay in their home. 
And uh, I don't think it was that expensive to do that on the side of their stairwell, but you also have to have a wide enough stair that you can do that, but the seat would fold up. So it really didn't obstruct the stairs. And I was always amazed with that. Yeah. I, I did consider that, but we have, you know, like six stair or seven stairs going up, then a platform and then another seven stairs. So I, I don't know how that would work. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, so there are many reasons why we make adjustments to our home and, and thinking ahead is, is a great thing to um, consider. And so a few of those considerations are um, living in a comfortable environment. You know, we, we want to be in a place that, that makes us feel like home. We don't, we don't want to be in an unfamiliar place, it, especially as we, as we get older and um, memory is sometimes it's harder to remember some things. And we want to be surrounded by those. Um, so familiarity, we want, we want that fam familiar feel. We want to know exactly where that one picture from one year that you know where it's at and you can go right to it. And that feeling of independence. Uh, we, uh, like I said, I, I helped take care of my grandma and the reason why she wants to live at home is she, she wants to be on her own. She doesn't she thinks she doesn't need anybody to help her and, 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 and that's important. As we get older, we wanna, we wanna know that we can still take care of ourselves and we have a little bit of that independence. Another piece is safety and security. Um, right now, I think that it, it, there's a, a new light coming in when it comes to living in a nursing home or assisted living facilities with this COVID breakout of just how dangerous it might be to be in those facilities. And um, the, it can be a scary thought uh, to a lot of individuals. And, and knowing you're in a place where you can control the environment that you're in is a, is is a helpful tool. Proximity to family is also a big thing. Um, I, I'm not near as close to my grandma as I would like to be, but she's got a lot of family around her. And, and that does make a big difference when you when you do have somebody that you are able to have come and check in on you or drop or drop uh, kits off to you, <laughs> um, groceries it, during a pandemic. Hopefully, that's not going to last too much longer. Um, and then it's also very cost effective. Uh, I think one of the things is sometimes we we don't realize how much cheaper it is to stay in our own home than to move into a residential facility or a nursing home until you start looking at the numbers. So talking about numbers, uh, does anybody have a guess of how much a day in a semi-private room in a nursing home facility costs here in Kansas? Uh, it's probably about a 60,000 a year or a month or what? I don't, I don't know. It's high because I had my mother in a assisted living area, but this was back in the early 2000s. So I know it's gone up considerably. Like 3,500 a month, maybe a little over 100, 150 a day. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So a semi-private room is almost $175 a day here in Kansas. And that's the average. And so if you're looking for a place with a lot more amenities, it's going to be a lot more expensive. Um, if you're looking at somewhere that you can have your own private room, that's going to be even more costly. And so the average of a private room every day in Kansas is $200. And so there's a website that um, I will share with you guys that you can go in and check the costs and, and it's in real time. And so it takes in account the nursing homes and private facilities that we have here in Kansas and um, what those costs look like. So yeah, the 60,000 uh, 60, is, is right on point. It can be from anywhere from 50 to $80,000 a year to live in a nursing home facility. And obviously that's not taking into consideration what your insurance would cover, that's a uh, straight cost. But when you think about it, that's a significant amount. Mm -hmm. um, and ta considering home, home remodeling, you can make a pretty nice remodel job for around $80,000. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking uh, a nice uh, 
big tub, jacuzzi tub. You can definitely do that for at least <laughs> less than a thousand dollars. And even on the smaller end, so home health aids. So having somebody come and check on you at your house uh, and having that every day, the cost of that average is around $140 a day. Uh, that's again, without insurance. Uh, and considering your insurance, it may cover a lot, but it may not cover. And so how do we budget and how do we take into account what we're going to be able to afford? And how do we spread that out over time? Um, looking at you all here on Zoom, I, I can tell you you're still young and willing and able. <laughs> and so you, you've got some time and you've got, you've got a lot of opportunities to make those adjustments before you get to that point. Okay. So getting down to the gist of it. So making, home sim making simple home modifications. I broke this down into, into three steps. And if you were able to come pick up your supplies at the office, oops, let me go back. Um, you'll be able to see some of the, the checklists and the questions that are on your paper. And these are, this is a great, assessment of going through your house. And so the first thing is assess one room at a time. Um, don't get overwhelmed with the process because when you start getting into it, it's going to be really hard to stop. It's going to be, oh, I need to do this. I need to do, I change this and this and this. Take it slow, assess one room at a time and make sure you're being thorough with it. Because if you do one room at a time, instead of doing here, there, and there, um, Things will, you'll forget about things. You, it'll never get done. You'll have all these projects going on at once. And then there's more hazards than, than safety precautions. Uh, a, a key, the key is less is more is the biggest key. And so the less you have in a room, the safer the environment. It's clearing out that cutter, clutter, making sure that there's space for you to walk around. There's space for you to put things on countertops and tabletops. And also that helps with your memory. And so having a clear space, you're able to remember where things are easier. And if you get in the habit of putting things in the same place every time, then it won't be as a, a struggle later on. And then consider your daily routine when determining what adjustments are necessary. And so when we went through my grandma's house, we started in the bedroom and I, we said, okay, grandma, when you get up in the morning, what do you do first? And she says, well, I get up and I, I get on, I go to my nightstand and I put on my watch and I check the time and I put my glasses on and I put my slippers on. And so we went to her nightstand, we cleared out her nightstand, we made a place for her watch, a place for her glasses, a nice uh, lamp on the table and nothing else. That makes it simple and easy for her to find things. And then we continued on and we went to the kitchen and we said, okay, what do you, what do, you do now? And she said, well, I make a pot of coffee. And so she actually makes a pot. And so she gets a pan, a pot out and pours the water in and puts the coffee in. And so we got all of that adjusted in the right areas so she could find it easy because that was her daily routine. And so you don't want to have that one pot that you use every day to be in that back corner of one cabinet because that just doesn't make any sense. So what to look for when you're evaluating. And so some key things that you're, you're going to be thinking about while you're walking through your house considering your daily routine. And the first thing is safety hazards. So looking, at, looking out for the things that may cause some issues later on. Um, I always I always said, okay, if there was a, a newly, like a, a two-year-old walking around and who could run around on everything and, and just loves to pull on cords and, and expose floors, what what's he going to fall on? What's he, how are you going to baby-proof your house? And so how are you going to proof your house for when you're older so, it, so you're not going to be causing any safety issues for you? So check those loose rugs, those exposed cords, and those uneven floors. And so um, those transitions from linoleum flooring, the carpeting, how, is that, how does that look? Do you have a rug in between there? 
Uh, is there a grip on the bottom of the rug so that you don't trip while you're transitioning from that? Uh, are there lamp cords or charger cords that are just plugged in in random places that are out and might not be able to uh, might not be able to access as easily? And so there's then there's issues with accessibility. And so do you have do you sometimes have struggle to reach items on low or high shelves? And what where's that one pot that you use? Is it in the back corner? And how can you make that more accessible? And while you're evaluating, so take notes of those regularly used items that you um, normally normally use, and how can you make that easier for yourself? And then those mobility hazards. So like you, you all talked about how you planned for the future and in, in purchasing a home that only has one floor, so it makes it easier. You have uh, a house with six steps and then a platform and then another few steps. And so where are those areas that there's too many stairs or the carpeted areas are, are tough? Or how is, how is your uh, bathtub and shower situation? Do you think you would have trouble later on getting in and out of the bathtub or um, your shower? Is it, is there a, a grip rug on the bottom of your, or grip flooring on the bottom of your shower so that you don't slip? Okay. And this is just um, the checklist and questionnaire that you all should have in your little pamphlet. And I would highly recommend going through this, uh, taking that step by step, going through each area and asking yourself these questions and considering, okay, what, what is a safety hazard here? What, what causes me a lot of trouble? Um, one thing that some may not even think about is how wide are your doorways? If I later on have to be in a wheelchair, have to have a walker, will I be able to go through my doorways? Uh, do I have a non-stair entryway or, or a way to have a ramp at my home in case, I, in case myself or my significant other is in that position? How many inches do you need for a wheelchair? It usually depends on the type of wheelchair, um, but they recommend having at least 36 inches wide doorway. That's pretty average um, of what we've found. And so uh, <laughs> getting your tape measure out and checking that or looking at that, but making sure that there's ways to adjust your doorways, that might be a higher cost, but in the end, it will save you a lot more it, it, when considering switching from a nursing home to staying in your own home. So luckily it's nothing but trimming, cutting out the edges of your doorway for hopefully for some and um, being able to reframe that and put in a, a better doorway. A question, Molly, I don't know if you or someone else. <clears throat> My parents are in their late eighties and they live in their home and luckily their bedroom's on the first floor. But there's some things on here that would be good to help them, but they are very independent. <laughs> yeah. Have any suggestions? I mean, anytime we want to help or help them with anything, they're, you know, oh, no, we can handle it. Which is, but there's a point where it's like, I, I want to help them in certain ways, but do you have any suggestions for how to gently convince them that they... <laughs> yeah. And uh, we, I have a lot of trouble with this with my grandma. Uh, she's, she's a very independent person. And um, we, we were on our call this morning with the staff and, and another individual said that it took her mom falling to scare her um, to know that. And unfortunately, that's what took my grandma. Um, and we don't want that. We don't want to wait until they, get, mm -hmm. they fall and they get scared. Um, I don't like that that was the case for my grandma. And so... Um, I, I like to approach it. And, and when we were going through her house, we, we just, we just asked her questions. And if it becomes a little more of their idea of, um, going through this, well, that, I think that might be a little bit better. When I think about it, that might like, like 
well well dad do you have like you're not able to get out of the bathtub do you think it would be a, a good way to put a grab rail up there and, well that might help me you know that might be a way of doing that and 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 I I I like to say well I, I know how to do it I like I, I'm able to, I know how to do it. I, I know this one person who, who did it in my house and I'll just have them come out to your house, dad, and I'll do it for you. And I, I kind of, that's how I did it with my grandma. You know, I said, well, I had mom do this and, and she really liked it. And so we can just have the guy come out to your house and it'll be no worries. Um, that that kind of, oh, okay. Like, it's not just me. Yeah, it's just, it's hard to get, convince them of anything <laughs> but that's a good idea maybe asking them questions about what they do and that's mm -hmm. it thank you yeah are, are there grab bars for I noticed I chipped my ankle bone mm -hmm. um, this year in um, you know getting in and out of the jacuzzi I could still do it because I'm still strong enough Mm -hmm. But I thought, you know, that's something that, you know, years to come, I turned 70 and years to come, you're going to have a hard time with it. But John wasn't very, no, no, we don't need anything like that. Is there anything that that's not permanent or doesn't damage, you know, that maybe could be used? Yeah, so um, so things that you can later on remove without right, right. Yeah, is there a thing? That, what, what would that be? Because I would be interested in that for like grab bars. Right, right, right. And so there's a lot of options for different grab bars out there and handrails. Um, it one it it will depend on what it would be put into, and so is it's it. A it's a jacuzzi. A jacuzzi. Mm -hmm. So like the shell of the jacuzzi. It, it's a big jacuzzi. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there probably will be some options and that you can find at Home Depot or Menards or even Walmart just, in some cases. Just Google that maybe is that or mm -hmm. I didn't know if you had a certain place to go to check those out. I don't have a certain place. Uh, one of one of the things that I I did and I encourage you guys to do is um, I didn't create a, a like a shopping list because everybody has a little something different that they need or that they like, and so mm -hmm. um, I would recommend the the um, Home Depot has a great department for like guardrails, things like that. So does Lowe's and Menards. Those types of home stores, uh, they're usually have they usually have an individual who is a little more knowledgeable in those certain um, things, and they'll know about installation and how mm -hmm. that can happen. I will uh, preface this with always check what your Medicare plan is, always check what your insurance plan is, because a lot of these um, guard, the, these handrails, these additive things that you put in your house, they can be covered by your insurance. You don't have to pay outright for them. Um, hmm. Sometimes it's, it's as simple as telling your doc, and sometimes your insurance needs to know that your doctor recommends it or prescribes it, and so when you're going for your checkup, just say, hey, I'm having a difficulty getting in and out of the tub. Would you um, prescribe a putting in a guardrail? And that way your insurance sees that it's from your medical doctor and they will help cover the cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Thank and you. Of course, and that is something that our Miss Denise Diaz will love to help you guys out on because there are a lot, luckily being here in Johnson County, there's a lot of opportunities for um, plans and cover, coverages that help um, with, with these medical costs. And because these are at times medical costs, they're not home improvements. And so, mm -hmm. um, that's a that's a great thing. So uh, on these on these pamphlets, you'll see on the back there's Denise's information, 
And so she will be able to go over your Medicare plan with you and you can make an appointment with her and you can, she will, she will help you understand what that might cover and what options there are for you. Okay, thank you. Molly also uh, used to be an Olathe Chamber member, used to be a medical supply store, which would be good with resources on where to find, you know, specialty items. The yeah. store that used to be down on 151st Street, it's closed. I don't know where it went, but all you'd have to do is Google probably medical uh, supply store. Yeah. And they would be a good um, resource also. It, there's Kansas City Home Medical Supply is now off of Metcalf at about 104. And it's a really good place to go look for all the different modifications that you can use. Um, it's pricey. So what I do, which isn't probably very nice, but I go and look and then I either order it on Amazon or get it at the hardware store. <laughs> <laughs> When, when we had to help my, my parents, much like you described your parents being in their 80s, mine were in the 90s. Um, this was like a year, two years ago. Um, because my dad was a veteran, we were able to access the VA. And, and some of these items that you've described, Molly, um, the evaluation, they actually had a social worker that came and walked through their uh whole living situation and made recommendations and sometimes they just sent them to them as well but mm -hmm. having someone with fresh eyes come in and look they see things that you might not see that is a great that is a great mm -hmm. option i did yeah. not know they did that that is very cool it was really helpful yeah mm -hmm. wonderful and that's something that if you have kids or you have friends, if, if you can't access uh, a worker like that, give, give your kids or give your friends this, this list and say, hey, help me go through my house. I, I, don't, I, I don't know what I might need or I might not need. Um, that, that set of fresh eyes really does um, play, play a big part of that. Thank you for that. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna put our put our knowledge to the test and see if you guys can spot these things if, and and then hopefully going through these little activities now afterwards you'll go through your house and be like oh, I didn't even notice that before so all right so this or that what type of handle would be best for older individuals. Always a lever, whether it's a kitchen sink or a doorknob, the levers are so much better. Yes, yes, that is correct. So um, the doorknobs, as we, as we get older, our arthritis kicks in, our dexterity is a little um, diminished. And so grabbing those, it, it gets difficult. And so changing out lever, changing out handles to levers uh, those of you with bigger dogs might <laughs> see, see them hopping on those at times, but it's gonna it's gonna help you help you out a lot easier, and it can be helpful when you're carrying in things. Pushing mm -hmm. the lever down, uh, it's so yeah. much easier, and that that is a safety thing that uh, you're not gonna fall as much uh, or drop all your things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So types of door, so those, these handles, I think Nancy covered that. So um, always longer handles. Uh, these little doorknobs, they slip on us. Smaller knobs are, are very difficult as we get older to, to grab and um, it can be hard at times. And so getting those longer ones, you can find these. I, it depends on how nice you want them to look. You can get them for pretty cheap at Menards. Um, I'm a big fan of Menards. It's not, this is not sponsored by Menards, but I'm a big fan. Me too. Me too. <laughs> okay. And then your rugs. So um, your styles of rugs. I thought maybe no rugs, but definitely a slip, slip mm -hmm. underneath thing if, if you're going to do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I recommend no rugs, but I, as we've all uh, agreed that older individuals can be very stubborn at times and, mm -hmm. and, 
and and we want our house to look good still we don't want to give up everything in our house and so mm-hmm. if if we if we must have it if we if we if we want to have it have it in a safe way and, and get that that no the that or the grip um style rug underneath um and you can you don't have to get a rug that has the grip underneath <coughs> purchase that separately at any home store for pretty cheap and they will be able to cut it to size for you. Okay, light switches. Not the old fashioned kind. I'm not sure what the one on the right is, but (laughs) bigger to handle. Mm Right, so the old fashioned kind is just that, it's old fashioned. Um, this, one on the, this one on the right is a, it's a more fancy one, um, but, it, but what it is, it has, a, it has a motion light in it. And so when it's at night, um, these, are, these are very nice to have in motion light, like hallways or main areas because there's a little light that comes on when it's turned off. And then you can turn it on with this little toggle right here. A quick question, Molly, sorry to interrupt. Mm-hmm. As far as that, like lamps, either floor lamps or table lamps that have those little things yeah. in my hands, I don't have as good a grip as I used to. Are there different kinds on those that are easier? Yes. And so something that I recommend with those, if you have those lamps that you just love and they still have those little toggles, um, they actually make plugins that there if you have a smartphone or a device that you can connect they make smart plugins and so you can actually plug that in to your lamp and then turn the lamp on on your phone <laughs> which is pretty cool that um, is that would work yes it's pretty cool you can actually um you can buy those you can buy a four pack of those smart plugs on Amazon for around $15. Okay. And those are, those are really helpful because you can even set them on timers. And so I actually have one put for my Christmas tree right now. And so I have it on a timer and so it'll just plug, turn on when I want it to. Um, okay. Thank you. And yeah. I have a timer. Hmm, that's good. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, another thing that I would recommend is if you're looking for new decorations, look for those touch lights. So they have the lamps with the bases that touch on and off. Mm. And I, ver- I recommend that, especially for the bedroom, um, having, that, having that lamp on your nightstand that you can um, just tap on and off because you don't want to be fumbling around at night or early in the morning trying to look for that tiny little knob. Good idea. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I like the question. And then the dreaded stairs. These are always fun. So obviously I think we can all agree that rails are the best way to go. Um, (laughs) Rails are fairly cheap to install and I always recommend having a railing on each side of your stairs. so adding that, adding that extra rail it, it can be fairly inexpensive, uh, depending on what kind of, obviously if you have a, one of those turning, rotating staircases, it might be a little more expensive, but a straight railway like this, it, it can be pretty cost efficient. And it will, it will save a lot of money in the long run when you, when you consider how much a, a trip to the ER and the, in the ambulance would cost. Um, I think one ambulance trip would cover a couple of stair uh, railways. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of a room by room evaluation. And um, we're, I'm going to test your guys' knowledge a little bit. And you can use your little um, questions if you'd like. And so this is the bathroom. And so um, what in this bathroom could you guys see that would need to be changed? I put a handrail to the right of the toilet on that right. little wall. Right here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are we assuming that's already a high seat stool? No. Okay. okay. So 
So a higher yeah. seat stool is nice. <clears throat> Anytime you have to replace a stool, just do it with a high seat one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those grab bars inside the shower would be helpful. Okay. Maybe replacing the tub with a, a shower and a shower chair. Oh, yeah. It is good that it doesn't have doors or curtain right there. Mm -hmm. See, mine has doors now. Oh, it's not good. Assume the rug has the grips on the bottom or or not? We'll, we'll assume that it doesn't and we'll make okay, sure. Okay, then I think that. I would, yeah. Okay. Change that. Is there anything else? I'd be putting curtains up at that window, but. <laughs> you know, I had that same thought. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's out in the country. Uh, is there levers on the uh, shower? If you ever have to replace anything, replacing those with levers. That's good. a good idea. And the sink as well, although it looks like it might be a lever. I don't know. It, does it look looks like, like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, we just recently put it on the shower, one of those that you could just take off and, you know, um, a sprayer that you could take off and then spray mm. on your body. Oh, good. Yeah, the mm -hmm. adjustable, adjustable heads. Yeah. Yeah, I have yeah. one of them. And you could actually you know, have a seat and you can sit down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. you guys got all of the ones that I, I found as well. <laughs> And so, yep, right there. And a transition or shower chair is going to be very helpful depending on what you have. Um, if, you, if you have a shower, uh, that's going to be super simple of putting that in. If you have a tub, there's a lot of individual. I, I love taking baths. I'm a, I love mm -hmm. taking baths. And so, mm -hmm. and so they have those chairs that, that will swivel out and you can sit on outside of the tub and they can swivel back in and lower you down into the tub. It's um, gonna be a little more costly, but if you, uh, I, my, my grandma loves, uh, she, she gets sore, she, she aches and she hurts and, and nothing feels better than soaking in the tub, having those, those Epsom salts and, and right. having yep. a good soak, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, that's something that we decided that was a, a big part of her independence that she didn't want to give up. Um, and so we added that transition chair and with the, with the help of our, her Medicare plan, we covered some of the costs of that and she's mm -hmm. still able to um, take some baths. Um, one thing I didn't circle and you can't really see it, but on the bottom of your tub, uh, I recommend putting those grips down. And so um, they have little grip stickies that you can put that are like little and you can put them all around. Some people prefer the mat. I think sometimes that comes up a little too easy and can cause even more accidents. And so getting something that's no slip, no grip, or no slip grip um, style mat on the bottom of your tub is really helpful. That adjustable shower head makes a big difference. If you don't have a shower head, if you just have the tub, uh, you can get one that connects from your um, tub, the faucet, and it you will connect it, and it's a, a shower head straight from the faucet. Um, that adjustable one, you can move up and down. There's ones that come out. Uh, they have all different kinds ranging of all different prices. You can get them at Walmart. You don't have to get something super fancy. It just has to be something that works, you know? Um, another thing I will mention here is um, thinking about what temperature your hot water heater is set on. Is, have you looked at the temperature that your hot water is, uh, is set on? Because um, it, it, can be, it can be terrible when your skin is more sensitive and, and um, you're losing that sense that you're going to have a lot more issues burning yourself or causing things. And so Checking on your water heater and turning that temperature down to a safe temperature will help out in the long run. 
that that rug you put the nail right on it the changing the levers that is a great addition and i i recommend having levers that have a hot and a cold symbol on it i get them mixed up still to this day Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so having that having that clearly printed out um if in case your significant other having trouble in remembering which one it caused some less cold or less very hot showers. Those guardrails inside the shower tub. Um, and then a guardrail right there, of course, as well as that high chair. And so um, you, I think you guys, you covered every circle that I did. <laughs> All right, so next, next area is going to be our kitchen. You mentioned the longer handles instead of knobs. Yes. That's the first thing I see. There we go. It's uncluttered. That's a good thing. It is. Look at that clear counter space. That's what we like to see. The coffee coffee Uh, pops up high. It looks like. The rug. Rug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this I'm not sure what are the handles like on the kitchen sink. That's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. It's one of those levers that you move oh. out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't care for Thank those. I do like the high uh, faucet where it arches up high. Those are really nice for people trying to get things under them and out. Yeah. It's a lot easier to maneuver. We mm-hmm. just did that. I love it. Yeah, it is very nice. Are there any other ones? Well, are we trying to address if they don't have to reach up too high for things? Yes, yeah. So reaching up too high or even too low. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which to the right of the sink, I'm not sure if it's a light or a garbage disposal that I can't tell exactly what it is. Oh, right here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is so, there a place where they can sit down to work? Awesome. No, there is not. I just saw uh, where you can, you know, if you open your drawer, open the cabinet doors, you can pull out, pull out a tray and you, that way you don't have to look way back in the back. Yes. Those are we, have a, we have a My couple opinion. of those built in when we got the house and it's mm-hmm. fast. This others I have stuff shoved in the back. <laughs> I don't know what's there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're my favorite. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, for a, a lower workspace, I don't see one here, but one of our previous homes had the pull-out breadboard. Oh. And you could pull that out and it gives you several inches lower than the counter and you could sit there, you know. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. My grandma did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my grandpa uh, custom made the the kitchen area for my grandma because she's very short. And so her countertops are are significantly shorter than most individuals. And he actually- That was nice. Yeah, and and this drawer right here, he made it so it's actually a step stool. And so he pulled it out and it was, you could put the leg down on it and she could step onto it to reach higher cabinets. Mm, that's a great idea. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for older individuals. I, I, I tell her not to use it now. Cause that's a, that's a scary, <laughs> mm-hmm. but um, yes. Putting the microwave on the counter instead of so high up. Yes. That is actually my first thing. And so mm. having an above the oven microwave, it causes a lot of issues. One, you can't reach it. Two, it's above the oven. Um, when we're younger, it's easier to make sure that we're not burning ourselves on our uh, oven while we're reaching up there. But having it on a countertop or even a cart that you can have sitting next to your kitchen, uh, it will make it a lot easier. And um, as I found with my grandma, she 
doesn't cook as much now. And so we prepare a lot of meals for her and we put them in the freezer and she can get them out and reheat them as she needs to. And so she's using her microwave a lot more than she used to. Are those knives stuck to a magnet on the wall? They are. Yes. That kind of makes me nervous <laughs> for anybody, especially with grandkids even coming over. Yes. I like my wooden holder. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's easier to, that's easier to grab as well. Those knives, you, you, have, you have to grab on that wall. So those levers, changing out those knobs to, to handles is going to be a big thing. Uh, removing this rug, there's not a lot of need for a rug in your kitchen. Um, I like those, those cushioned mats that you can stand on because that relieves a lot of pressure on your feet when you're standing. Um, and you can get the big oversized ones that have a slow transition to them. So they're really heavy and, and they're rubber. And so that makes a lot more sense in the kitchen. And it's easier to clean up than a rug, which is nice. Uh, lower, uh, lower drawers, rearranging your kitchen to kind of reduce that clutter and, and getting those stuff out of those lower drawers is going to be a big thing. That faucet, they actually make touch faucets now which is pretty cool. And so you can just touch it on and touch it off. You don't even have to use a lever handle or anything. It's pretty fancy. I don't know if it's, it's too fancy for me, but for older individuals, it's really nice because you can just tap it. Um, but having that lever on there, two levers on the sides is really helpful. Okay, so in the bedroom, Hopefully we don't have to change a lot of things up in our bedroom, but sometimes that's where we accumulate a lot of clutter because the common areas are, they're nice spaces, they're clean spaces. Um, so I'll click through a couple of things on here. Um, and you guys shout out whatever you see. But like I was uh, discussing earlier, having that nightstand that's clear and having a nightstand, uh, for one thing, making sure you have a little table stand next to you. Um, having a lamp, uh, a place to put your glasses or your phone is an uh, important thing. If you still have a house phone, see, uh, think about ways if you can connect or have a wireless phone sitting next to you on your nightstand. So as you get older, you don't have to get up and walk all the way to the kitchen uh, to get the phone. I have a charger for my grandma for her phone and I plug it. I have multiple chargers around the house because she always forgets to. And so I've got one plugged in and have a little station for her that has a charging for her phone and then a place for her glasses and then that touch on lamp. That's really helpful. Molly, mm -hmm. Molly, sorry to interrupt again. Go um, ahead. I, have, I found for my parents their Oh, I don't know, I got like a half dozen for a little bit on Amazon, but it's a little round rubbery thing and it sticks on like a cabinet or the dresser or something, but it's got where you can put your phone cord through it and it doesn't fall back down on the ground or something. So they're not always having to reach down and get it. And that's helped them when they're charging their phones. Yes, thank you for adding that. That is a great thing. And so, yeah, what she's saying, it's, it's a, a cord organizer. And so it basically clamps your cord into place so it'll stay onto the countertop. And so you don't have to worry about it falling all the time. And those you can find on online or at Walmart for three, $4 sometimes. They're pretty cheap. The next area is sheets, bed sheets. They, these play a big role sometimes. Uh, we wanna have comfortable bed sheets and those, those smoother materials, sometimes they snag on our skin when we have dried skin and calluses, and they're not as warm at, at night. Um, I found that with my grandma, she, she gets cold a lot easier than we do, and her house is a lot warmer than mine. And so we've gotten her flannel sheets that stay warm at night, and so um, she can regulate her temperature a little bit better. And it's, it's pretty soft. It, it's actually really comfortable. Molly? Yeah. Um, muted I asked the question the clamps for the to keep the cords in place what would I google that on Amazon or wherever to find those 
Um, I would Google cord organizer. Cord organizer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And I will make a note of that and I will find some and, and share the link um, and send out an email to you guys okay. with some of these things that we've talked yeah. about. That'd be great. That'd be great. Yes. Thank yeah. you. I know it can be, uh, once you Google things, it's just a mess of things that there's too many options sometimes. Oh yeah, and like Mary Mary commented in the chat, um, bed rails and a bed frame that raises the head and feet can be very useful for people who have a hard time getting in and out of bed. And so they do, yes, they do make those um, beds that have the remote that you can move up and, and adjust the feet and, and all of that fun stuff. And um, I, I'm not saying it will cover it, uh, I would, I would recommend looking into your insurance though to see if that is a cost that could be covered even partially. Those beds are, they, they can be very expensive, uh, but it is an investment. Um, and then at the bottom, I circled the, the feet of this bed, putting risers on your bed frame, if you can't purchase one of those. Um, the lower you have to get down into your bed, the easier it'll be to get back up. And so making it at a level where you can just lay, like, lay back just a little bit and then you're back in bed instead of having to go all the way down will be very helpful. And I will add with those, with those mattresses, they also do have the, the recliner chairs that lift, they ease up into a standing position. Uh, we purchased one for, um, or not we didn't, but one of my family friends, they purchased one for their grandparents um, when he had uh, surgery and he couldn't get in and out. So um, he it just had the remote and stood him all the way up and he sat back and it leaned him all the way back down, which is really great. The next thing on here, this big rug, um, I would recommend not having that, or if you do, not having a shag style rug, uh, that causes a lot of issues when you're waking up at four o'clock having to go to the bathroom at night. Um, and then this armoire is a really great addition to any room. Uh, at my home, at my grandma's home, uh, the closet is very small and she has a lot of things in there and it can be very hard to find things that she wants. And so uh, we just bought, it's not a fancy looking one that with a furniture piece. It's one from Walmart that just stands up. Um, and we bought, we bought one for her and we can hang her clothes up for her that she likes to wear multiple times. And it's easier for her to access and get in and out. Okay, and this last one, I know we're, we're about to time, so I, I apologize. This has been fun for me, and so I hope you guys have learned a little bit. Um, this last one is the outside of your house, which we spend a lot of time inside our house, but before we get inside, we have to go through the out. <laughs> so we have to make sure that our exterior is safe and able to um, help. Oh, and I think, uh, sorry, I didn't see that chat. Um, but the cable clips, they're called cable clips for those cord organizers. So on this outside, and still feel free to pop in whenever. Um, I'm really surprised there are no rails on that house to begin with. That's, exactly. that's surprising. Mm -hmm. Stair rails. Yes, stair rails. Yes, that is the number one thing you need to do is add rails on both sides. We're getting to that time of year where it's going to be icy and that is not a fun thing to tackle uh, when you're like, dealing with steep stairs. I would also recommend uh, this house, it might be a little harder to do, maybe to the side or the back entrance has a zero um, walkway that you don't have any stairs. Uh, but looking into ways that you can add a, uh, a ramp or a ramp, uh, ramp style walkway be very helpful. So, and these are very steep stairs also. Um, that's gonna be a bigger modification to make, but if you're able to adjust those stairs so they're three or four very long and long and short shallow stairs would be really helpful. 
The next is this uneven sidewalk, and that can be a pain in the rear ends. Uh, doing sidewalk remodel is not fun, and sometimes you, if you live in the city, you don't know if that is a job for the city, if that's uh, your own property, and so looking to who's responsible for maintaining that sidewalk, maybe going up to your house, it might be yours, um, but that is something that you can look into but making sure you have a level walkway leading up to your house. The next is this little light. And so I would actually switch this out with a motion sensor light um, so that when you're walking up to your house, it turns on. This is also a safety thing. If you live at home, if you're by yourself, if someone is snooping around and getting in your house, that light turns on and you're able to see it from your windows uh, that way don't ever go outside when the, you don't know who's at that motion sensor light, but those can be very cheap um, tools that are, that will help you out. And easily installed as well. A lot of those are not super hard to install. This would be a challenge because it's taller and you would have to get on a ladder. I would not recommend doing that yourself. Um, most people have kids just for that purpose. That's, that's my job as the grandkid. I get to climb the ladder and do all that fun stuff. So recruiting those friends or family that can help with that is going to be helpful. And asking the, the home store when you purchase those items, what, what kind of installation would you guys be able to do? Asking those questions because if they can't install it, they probably know somebody that can come out and install it for you. All right, the next is... Um, Oh, that ramp. And then the last thing is I love putting in little solar lights along the walkway so that you're able to see the walkway clearly at night when that motion, if you're not in range of that motion sensor. They're fun, they're decorative, uh, they look good, and they're very helpful. Okay. Whew. We got through most of it. So I've got a couple of things we'll wrap up. I'm sorry, if, if you need to leave, go ahead. Um, but I thank you guys for coming if you have to go. Uh, but I have a challenge for you all. Um, three very, very simple things that are gonna make your life a lot easier in the long run. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Please reach out to Denise. We'll be able to either answer your question or locate somebody who knows the answer to your question. Um, so the first is, Get all of those throw rugs and clear your walkways. So take those throw rugs. If you don't need them, now's the time. It's winter cleaning. It's not spring cleaning yet, but it's winter cleaning and it's a good time to do so. Um, if you want to hold on to those, please, please, please go and purchase that grip that goes underneath those rugs. You can simply do a measurement at your house and then take those measurements to your home store and they'll cut it, they'll cut it right. Uh, right for the rug your size. Uh, it might cost an, a dollar extra to do that, but I'd pay somebody to do that for me. The next is already taken care of for you. If you have gotten your kits, as uh, purchase those plug-in motion sensor lights. That is our gift to you, and that's something I encourage you all to plug those in in areas that you walk frequently. And so pathway to the bathroom at night, pathway to your phone um, or in the kitchen, those areas that you walk, do, walk in a lot, um, plug those lights in. Those are easy to purchase. I purchase those on Amazon for fairly cheap. If you would like the link to those so you could purchase more, I will add that to um, the list of things to Good. Share. Those were really nice. Thank you. Of course, yeah. They're very <clears throat> helpful. Join us. Mm -hmm. And I will say, if you're looking for more, um, I purchased the ones that have the soft yellow light. And the reason why we purchase the ones with the soft yellow light and not a bright white light is if you're waking up in the middle of the night, those soft yellow lights don't mess with your sleep as much. So if you're, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're still a little sleepy, go into the bathroom and you want to go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. Those soft right. yellow lights are a lot easier and a lot since a lot better on your sleep cycle than those bright lights are. Good suggestion. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the last is do this home assessment. And so get that family friend, get that, get that kid um, that you've raised all those years and say, hey, it's your, turn. it's your turn to take care of me and help me go do this home assessment. Um, it's a perfect time. Uh, people are uh, staying at home a lot more. And so you get a lot more time to do these assessments and, and really think about, uh, be very thoughtful about where you're going to be in a few years and how you want to make your home a safer place to live. All right, the last thing is just stay connected. Um, let us know if you need anything. We're always here. That's, that's why Extension is here. We, we want to provide you guys with all the information that you need. Um, this is a tough time for us all. So always can be communicating with your friends and family. And then that technology piece, it, it can be a pain, but it is very, very helpful. Um, there are a lot of smart home devices out there that make your life a lot easier. Um, anywhere from user faces that help you stay connected with friends and family to those smart home plugins that I was talking about. Um, technology can can make your life very efficient. And so I encourage you to just kind of look, look out there. There's so many options. And so just, just be on the lookout. And if you have any questions or say, oh, I wonder if there's something out there that could help me with that, you just go ahead and shoot me an email and I'll be able to help you. All right. Is there, I'll send you the resources. These are other resources that I've used today. Um, but is there any questions for you guys? I know that it's a couple minutes past our, our time, um, but there's a lot of information I wanted to share with you. So I wanted to make sure you're all taken care of. What's the shirk? The shirk. Yes, and so that is a program that Denise um, uh, does. Oh, yeah. right. Nancy, mm -hmm. I am I'm it's, sure now. It's senior health. Um, I'm like you, Molly. I'm kind of drawing a blank on it, but it's, it has to do with the senior health that they do. Yeah. They help with the, if you uh, change up your Medicare, the Part D on the drugs each year, yes. they will go through and they will figure out which one in your area is maybe the uh, best cost-effective um, program for you. Hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. They're great. That's wonderful. Yes. And like I said, I'm the 4-H program manager. This usually isn't my department. So Denise has all the, all the answers to those other programs that she does, but they're very helpful. And she does a great mm -hmm. job of knowing what programs are out there for you, what's available to help you and what's going to save you the most money. Well, you did a beautiful job, Molly. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is developed been... a good program. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Great, great Thank job. You. I appreciate it. This has been a, a great program that I've become passionate about because I've, I've seen the I've seen the impact that it's been on my grandma, and I'm going home in a couple of weeks to see her and my mom, and I'm going to start doing this kind of stuff to my mom's house as well. <laughs> Where is home for you? Home is in Western Kansas. So I'm from Norton, Kansas. Norton. Okay. I was an FCCLI advisor and fact. Oh, that's yes. wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's a great program. But yes, thank you all um, for attending. If, Like I said, if you didn't get the kit picked up in time, if you would like some more or if you'd like some more information, reach out to me, let me know. Um, I love this modification stuff. It's, it's kind of a hobby of mine, so. Molly, you might mention uh, to the ladies that are still here, uh, what you did with your grandmother for like a, uh, was it the cell phone or you could FaceTime? You might mention yes. that, that was wonderful. Yes, and so um, I, so one of, the, one of the biggest things with my grandma living at home was we couldn't see her. We couldn't see her to know that she was okay. And so a, an investment that we made was we purchased a Facebook portal, and that is a small device that utilizes your Facebook account. And um, we're able to video call her and actually see her. Um, this is a very, very user-friendly device. 
Um, because you guys have been participating in these events, um, I think we're planning on doing a drawing for one of those devices. And so you all will be put into those drawings. I will share that information with you all um, about those portals because she doesn't use Facebook at all. I, I signed her up, I, I got her an email. I made her account private and added some friends for you, but you're able to video call your friends. And so this is a great way to connect. Her birthday was yesterday, she turned 88. And um, so I called her on her camera and it actually moves around with her. So oh, wow. yeah, wow. I like that. That's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, it has the weather on there um, and it has news channels that she can watch. We had to purchase a little internet device, be a, a, a hotspot because she didn't get internet at her house. Um, but that was a simple cost of like twenty dollars a month, which that that was that was easy. That was an easy uh, sell to me. I don't know if I have. Is it like Alexa that um, stays on? My my mom would be having a fit about being her privacy being invaded. Mm -hmm. So it stays on, but it's it you it it connects with Alexa. Um, so you can use Alexa on it, but you don't have to. Um, it's, it's not, it stays on. The cool thing about it that I like to do, so I have the portal app on my phone and I can see my grandma's portal from here. And the main face is going to be pictures. And so um, I, I have the app and so I'll take all my family's pictures and I'll add it to her and it'll send it directly to her portal. And so she can, it'll just swipe through and you can see all of the pictures on it. Um, I'll bet she loves that. Oh yeah, she loves it. It is so fun because- um, There's something similar. My family got together and got my parents a few years ago, GrandPad. Yes. They computers at all so they were very intimidated by anything computer type of stuff but it's very simple and we can post pictures on there and you can only people can video chat with it but only people you put on there so you know it's no one that you don't know that's calling them or something so they, they've yeah. been finally gotten used to it and they love it and you put pictures and videos of family mm -hmm. so, yeah it's great to be able to do that and see them actually yeah, and then that's I looked I looked into the grand pad as well. Um, the I I chose I chose the portal over my my grandma has a jitterbug still on one of those flip phones. She's not techy at all, and so handling a device was going to be a little too difficult for her. And so the portal just sits on her um, kitchen See. table, and it, it the the speaker on it is very awesome, and so it's loud enough where she can hear it. And we actually got her a, a heavy stylus pen that she can touch the screen with. Um, so she can't, so she doesn't have to use her finger with it. Um, but those devices, they are, they are great. And I would tell you, it is, a, it has been a lifesaver through this COVID because I haven't been able to see her, but I've been able mm -hmm. to see her through the screen. So mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But great. yes. Yeah. Molly it's, did. Um, no one made any mention about like wearing something around your neck if you had a medical emergency or anything like that. Does Medicare or anything handle anything like that? They do. And that is a great thing. And so we, uh, like I said, that what scared, what got my grandma to do some things is falling and that finally scared her. And after, after falling outside and not being able to get up and taking so long to get back in to call somebody, um, that was a big scare. And so we, we got the fall detector. Um, I can't, I cannot for the life of me think of what it is called, but somebody from the hospital came out and installed it at her house. And she has the one that's sitting on her countertop as well as the one that's around her neck, uh, around her neck. Okay. And you can put, I think, three or four people on the emergency call list. And so, it, and, and it's happened. And so my, my grandma has fallen. And when she's fallen, they get, a, my mom will get a call and say, mm. hey, like and before they call um, the emergency contacts, uh, they will get the alert and they will call my grandma. And so 
it's on the speakerphone, they can hear it. And so she can't, even if she, she can't get to the phone, she can say, I'm okay, I'm okay. Or I need help. And they will send somebody out. They, uh, they sent out an ambulance one time because she couldn't, she wasn't close enough to say, I'm okay. And get there. But it was great. They needed to send out an ambulance because she's stubborn. She said she was okay. She wasn't okay. <laughs> she needed somebody to check on her. So. How costly is that, or do you know? With her Medicare insurance, it was in, it was covered, and so it was it was very helpful. They're very cost efficient. Um, I I will ask Denise if she knows. I don't know about this area. Obviously, that was in Western Kansas, so it may look different. Um, but, but I do you know. Now then, you could yeah. contact. Yeah, so I will contact. I can. Uh, Denise would probably know that information. Um, and so we can reach out to her and it might be who installs it, what plan you go with. Cause there's, you can have a bracelet, a necklace and the, the ne it, it is waterproof. And so they can wear it in the tub or in the shower. Um, mm. Cause that's where a lot of falls happen. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. want to make sure that time is taken care of. That took a little convincing to let her know that it was waterproof and it was okay to take in the shower, but. Now, what happens if she lays down? It doesn't show that you've fallen, does it? Or you know, anything like that? No, it's one of those where it, I don't, I don't know the science of it, but those abrupt okay. um, falls, um, something that shakes the system. Yeah. You know? So easing back okay. into your bed or things like that, that's not gonna set it off. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would, but I would rather be on the sensitive side than anything in those cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. Are there mm -hmm. any other questions? Probably downstairs. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's it for my end. Thank you all for coming. This was awesome. Um, please let us know if you have.